Hey there, and welcome to this course on Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring. Hey Su, Jesu, Joy of Man's Desiring. This is a great piece. I'm sure that you have known it for a long time, and it's really exciting now that we get to work through it together. This has been a lot of fun for me putting this together, and I am really excited to get into it with you. Let's take an overview and also talk about what um, different ways we can approach this depending on your current level of abilities. To begin with, let's just take an overview of this entire score right here. So if we take a look, I know it's very small on the page here, a couple of things. First off, our, um, our right hand fingerings are all on the top. This is all of our right hand fingerings throughout. Um, the left hand fingerings are written beside the notes. They're very small, but you can see them in here. This is also in three, four time. So we'll be counting one and two and three and one and two and three. And actually we'll be counting in triplets because this is in, and we'll talk about this rhythm as well, but this entire thing is in triplets. So it's actually like one triplet, two triplet, three triplet. So it's in this triplet um, rhythm for most of the time, except for um, this little spot right here. Is there any other? I think that might be it. So just that, that one little spot, we go into 16th notes right there. So mainly it's just this, um, it's almost like a jig. It, it could be written in nine, eight, just as easily as three, four with triplets. And it would look exactly the same on the page. There's also, if we just take a broad look, then we can see that it's going along, it's going along, it's going along. Something changes right here, right? We can see something change right here because all of a sudden we have a longer bass note than we've had. And then we go into this area right here, which are these big long notes, big long chords. And then we go back into it and then we have big long chords again through this section right here. And so just glancing at the music, you don't have to know what chords those are or anything. We just have to look at it and say something happens there. This is just a kind of the 30,000 view, 30,000 foot view of what's going on. And then we have, it looks like, some repeat signs here. So we see our brackets right here with the one in it and the two in it. These are our repeats and then we have a repeat sign right here. And where does that repeat back to? All the way up here to the second measure. So the first time, for as far as the roadmap goes, the, um, the first time we go through here like this, boom, and we go to this point. And then we're going to, from here, we're going to go back up to right there. And then the second time, Let's change colors for it. Then we'll go through like this. Boom, we're gonna go to here. We're going to hop over all of this, go straight to here, and then to the end. And that is our roadmap. So that's how we, that's how we play this, this tune here. Now, we've also, I've also broken this up into little pieces for you, as I do with a lot of these courses. And so you'll see that there are these little numbers right here basically every every two bars more or less there's a, there's a number and these are the practice numbers and we'll go through section by section and um and look really deeply into each section and look at both hands and also what to do with it musically and all that so we'll, we'll go through this thing with a fine tooth comb get all the knots out okay if you are a more beginning player or if you just don't um feel uh, confident jumping right into the uh the full piece that has a bunch of chords in it and everything. I've also included just the melody here for you. And so with this melody only, what you can do is play it. And I included the, uh, the, the top, um, the right hand fingerings for the entire thing, mainly because they're connected to the left hand fingerings in the, in the score. And I would have had to delete them all and redo them all. So I just left them in there, but you can also see which fingers are, um, are to be playing it when you go to, when and if you go to the master to play the full thing. So then you can play just this. Which is great anyway, so it's great. I mean, it's great sight reading, it's great note reading practice. It's, um, it's mainly on the top four strings, D, G, B, E. So it'd be great if, if for nothing else, it's just great, beautiful sight reading practice for you to get used to your notes. Whether you're playing, whichever score you're playing, keep in mind this F sharp right here. So every single sharp F sharp that we come, every single F that we come across will be sharp. So second fret instead of the first fret. And on the fourth string, it means that the fourth fret instead of the third. 
and since we're doing it on the low E, it'll be the second fret instead of the first, F natural, F sharp. So every single F sharp, this entire piece stays down in the, um, in the open and in, in the position down here. We do go up to the fourth fret to this F sharp a little bit, but mainly the whole piece is right here in the hand at the fretboard. So that means that if you um, have smaller hands or if you'd like to just change it up one day in practice, you can use a capo if you have a capo and just put it up here and then you can play the whole thing right here and it's not gonna mess you up because you're not going all over the place. So this is a capoable song you know the clamp that goes here and just stops the strings there so then you can play right above it as if it were down here so that's an option for you if you ever just want to change things up make it sound a little bit different can be fun in practice just to get a little variety happening okay that's it for right now let's get into the sections and i look forward to seeing you there <laughs>